Hey everybody, it's Flying Ryan here. Uh, recently, Helimax gave away 150 of the Axe 100 CP uh, TXR versions on their Facebook page. And so I figure a lot of people are going to be looking to set it up with their Tactic TTX 650 radio. And since this came out before this, uh, there are no instructions for how to set this up in the manual. So I figured I'd go ahead and show you how to do that. Uh, we're going to kind of be following along on page 12 and 13. Uh, these are your steps for setting up the TXR version. And they've got Futaba and Spectrum settings. Uh, so I basically use the Futaba settings as a guide. Uh, these have all your, your throttle, pitch, curves, and everything. So these numbers are going to be the same. We've got some slight differences elsewhere. Uh, but you can kind of go, uh, look at this page to kind of follow along. Uh, to get the exact numbers. So to start, obviously we're going to turn on our radio and it's going to start up with whatever model you formerly were using. We want to make a new model, so press and hold enter. So we've got model select, we'll pick that, go down to an empty slot, and this is a helicopter, so we'll set up helicopter, and it's ready to go. So now I press enter to enter the menu here, and we'll start by setting our servos. So Go into servo set and channel three, which is our throttle, needs to be reversed. And then I found this out the hard way. Channel five, which is the gyro, also needs to be reversed. And so now we've got our servos reversed and we can back out of there. I will show you at the end of the video how to set up dual rates and expo and I will explain what those are for those that don't know. Uh, throttle hold is very important, which I believe is already set up. Yep, here we got switch H, which is this switch. So you'll see when I switch it, now it's on. And so that's already ready to go, so we can leave that alone, back out of there. I will explain that later as well. Uh, so we'll start with throttle curve. Uh, basically, this is how much throttle you get based on where the stick position is. And then this is our stunt switch. It's a three position, position switch. So we've got normal mode, and then we can have two stunt modes. Basically your stunt modes, or also known as idle up, is how you do 3D maneuvers. So we'll start by setting up our throttle curve for normal. And according to the instructions, let's see, we've got normal throttle is zero to 100%. So it looks like we don't have to do anything here. I've got at the low position, point L, I've got 0%. Move the throttle up and now you'll see point is at H and that's 100%. So our throttle is zero to 100%. And you can see there as I move the throttle, you can see the bar go from zero to 100%. So normal mode, we want throttle all the way off when it's down and throttle all the way up when it's up. So that's normal as is. So now we'll move on to stunt one. And now, let's see, idle up, throttle, we want 100% to 90% in the middle to 100% at the top. So low position, we want 100% throttle. So hit enter, oh wait, there we go. So move that all the way up to 100%. So now when your stick is all the way down, which in stunt mode, you are no longer controlling the motor speed, you just control the pitch of the blades. Uh, so 100% down, we want the throttle to be moving at 100%. At middle position of the stick, which you can kind of line it up with the bar there. So middle position is basically your uh, no lift, no, no thrust either direction when you're in 3D. So at that point, we want to make another point. So we hit enter and you'll see it creates point 0.1. And we want that rate to be 90% according to the manual. It's 100, 95, 90. So we'll put the middle at 90. And then that will just sort of automatically create a curve so we don't have to worry about those 95% positions. So we'll hit enter. So now you'll see when my stick is all the way down or which would be giving thrust up, how you fly upside down, the throttle's at 100%. When I'm all the way up or giving thrust down, how you fly like normal, the throttle's at 
when it's at center where I don't want any lift in any direction, the throttle moves down to 90% and kind of slows down a bit. Now I'm going to go ahead for stunt two. We'll make that like hardcore 3D. So we'll have the throttle move at 100% at all times. So we'll just move low position up to 100%. And now the throttle is 100% across the board. Wherever our cyclic or wherever our collective pitch stick is, the head speed is still 100%. So that's going to be your most aggressive 3D. So our throttle curves are now set up. We can back out of that and go into pitch curves. And pitch curve is going to be how much angle the blades have. And that's how you can do 3D maneuvers. So we we'll want to move the stick back to normal. And we want to set up our normal pitch. So here in the instruction manuals, normal pitch. And we want 42 to 78. So at low position, we're going to have 48% pitch. So move all the way up. Positive 48. All right. And then at high position, it'll obviously already be at 100%. So now we want to move it down to, what was it, 78%. So, bring that down to 78. Okay, so now in normal mode, where we already set our, our throttle curve to be a, z a zero when you were down, and 100% throttle at max, now the blades are also going to change their pitch with that speed from a 40% pitch to a 78% pitch. So that's also going to create more lift with the pitch of the blades, as well as our throttle curve changing the speed of the blades. So normal, 48% to 78%. Or wait, was it 42%? Sorry. 42% we're supposed to have here. So I need to drop that back down a little bit. These, you know, these are going to change depending on your taste. You can change these after the fact, but this is a good starting point. So 40%, 42 to 78 for normal. So now we'll move on to stunt one. And here, let's see what it says. Idle up uh, pitch. We want 35 to 78. So this one's a little bit confusing since in stunt mode, when the throttle is dropped, this is no longer changing the head speed. This is all pitch. And so all the way down is actually how you fly upside down. It makes the blades push air up. So we want we want when we're all the way down we want to have our maximum pitch idle up pitch setting so we want that to be 78 which is actually going to be negative 78 i did it again there we go so negative 78 at our low position and then our high position we want to be 78 again, but we're going to be positive 78 now. So we can bring that down to 78. Okay, so now when the stick is all the way down, it's giving 78% push up. When the stick is all the way up, it's giving 78% push down. And then when it's in the center, it's going to be at zero naturally in that curve. And so 0% stick, we don't want lift in any direction. That's, that's how you land and keep the helicopter from moving while the head speed is still spinning. So that is our setup for uh, stunt one. And then for stunt two to kind of follow the aggressive 3D that we set up on our throttle curve, let's go ahead and make that 100% to 100%. So we are already there, negative 100% when it's down, positive 100% when it's up. So now our pitch will also be all the way from its extreme one angle to the other angle while the uh, motor speed is at 100%. So that's going to give you really aggressive 3D maneuvers. All right, so our pitch is done. So we can back out of here and now we can go into gyro mixing. And for the gyro switch, it says here it's switch B, which is this switch, it's a two position switch, but it looks like they also allow you to set it up on a three position switch if you want three gyro settings. 
uh, but I'm just going to use two positions and set them both at 60%. Oh, hi Marble. The uh, instruction manual here says, let's see, or our, our gyro mixing, well depending on, let's see, it says for spectrum it says 60 and for, t for Futaba it says 50, uh, 55. So let's kind of, let's set up position one at 60 and then let's get in there, okay, and then let's put position two so we'll flip that switch, now we're on position two. Let's set up a little bit more aggressive gyro for that, maybe like 80, and then, so that'll be kind of like a beginner gyro, it'll hold it in place, maybe let's go up to like 85%. Okay, so now we've got 60% gyro and 85% gyro. And now we, we reverse the gyro, and maybe if you use negative percentages here, you don't have to reverse the throttle, uh, but I don't know, this this worked for me and I tested this and this worked fine, so let's just stick with that. Reverse the gyro servo as we did in the beginning and use positive gyro settings. Okay, so now we're done. We've got 60% on the switch up and the switch down. We've got 85%, which is going to be more gyro and make it more stable but less uh, less twitchy so it wouldn't be as good for 3D. Alright, and so that's it for the gyro. And then we don't need to mess with any of those. And don't need to mess with those. We can go down to the timer and we it suggests to set the uh, timer on the bottom there. It says timer four minutes. So we'll go ahead and set up a four minute timer. And then that's set to uh, switch A. So that's this switch, how you start your timer. Uh, so, okay, we're done there. And that is it. So now it is it is set up basically. It's ready to go. We've got our stunt mode set up. We've got our gyro set up. We've got our timer set up there. I think if I exit out you'll see. So yeah, I flip the switch and there it starts. Flip it back and it stops. And you can reset it by hitting clear. Okay, so now we're all set up. So now I will show you uh, dual rates and expo, which for the more advanced flyers, you already know this, you can probably go ahead and stop the video now, uh, but this is going to be better for beginners. Uh, I will explain um, our throttle hold and, and dual rates and expo and all that kind of stuff. So we'll go in dual rate and expo. And now I like to use the same switch to flip dual rates for everything. And I found this to be a good switch. I think uh, yeah, it's already set for that. So control switch D and this is switch D. So zero um, We'll go ahead and have zero be a hundred percent and dual rates are basically uh, Your servo throw so a hundred percent servo travel the servo is able to do a hundred percent of what it is meant to do and then we can go ahead and flip the switch down and then we can change it to let's say let's let's do this for beginners so we'll drop it way down to like 60 percent okay and so now you'll see position one we've got 100 percent rates position two we've got 60 percent rates so now the servos only do 60 percent of what they're meant to do at full stick you're still only giving 60 percent so that that tames it way down it makes it less twitchy and easier to control because you're only you're only using 60% of what the servo is able to do and then expo uh, is is kind of up to personal taste I like to be somewhere in the between like 20 or 30% expo uh, we'll make it extreme here to kind of show you the see how this curve has has sort of taken a dip in it so what expo does is it kind of dumbs down around the center of the sticks it makes it take longer before the stick starts having effect. You can kind of see it has that curve up. So towards the center, you're, you can do bigger movements that have less effect, and then the further out you get, the more effect it has. It kind of ramps up in the servo adjustment. Uh, so I, again, I like to have about, we'll go on low rates. When, you're, when you've got low rates already, you don't want too much expo or you'll end up in a situation where nothing's happening until you move way out and then all of a sudden everything happens. So you don't want to give too much expo. So on 60% on rates, sorry it went the wrong way, 
they use negative percentages for expos. So you want about, let's say, negative 15% with 60% uh, dual rates. And then flip it back to now we're at 100%. Let's put that at 20, negative 25% expo. So when you're at 100% travel, you want a little bit more expo so it's not quite as touchy. It gives you a little bit of lee room in the, in the middle of the sticks there. All right, so now position one, 100% with 25% expo. Position two is 60% with 15% expo. And that's for ailerons. So now we have to go and set that up for elevator as well. And so put the position back to one. We've got our 100%. And then what did we do? Negative 50 or negative 25% at 100% dual rates. And then on our position two, we want to drop that down. Oops. Drop that down to 60%. with negative 15% expo. And so now we should, oops, my, I was one off there, wasn't I? There we go. So 100% and 25, 60% and 15. And that should be the same as we had for aileron, right? 100% and 25, 60% and 15. And then just to check, we're also using the same switch for elevator. You can set up different switches for the different channels if you want. I like to just change the rates of everything with one switch. So now our, our rates are set up the same for elevator, oops, elevator and aileron. And so now we need to do rudder. I personally like my rudder to be twitchy. I don't like having to give huge movements on the rudder while also controlling throttle. If you have to make these drastic rudder movements, you tend to mix up the throttle with it a little bit. Uh, so I, I tend to leave my rudder alone. I leave it at 100% with no expo on everything. Uh, but to, to set it up for a beginner, let's go ahead and we'll leave it 100% with no expo on our, on our high rate switch. And then down on our low rates, we'll go ahead, oops, let's move the rudder to say 85% because that's still, that's pretty, the rudder is not insanely fast. So I think that'll be a good beginner setting and maybe let's throw in like negative 10% expo on it. Okay, so now we've got full on 100% no expo on high rates. Down is our low rates, 85% with 10%. So now I think that's that's a pretty good position. We, you you want to start with your switch down on low rates. That's going to make it less touchy and it'll be good to, to get a feel for the helicopter and not be quite out of control. And then when you're ready to get a little bit faster and more aggressive, you can go up to high rates. Or if you want to do 3D flight, you'll want to stay in high rates as well. Uh, so that really is it for the setup. Uh, so now I'll kind of do a little bit more explaining about how a collective pitch helicopter works. I don't know why Marvel wants to be in our business here. Um, so throttle hold is going to keep the throttle from from uh, spinning basically. When you're when you're in stunt mode, as soon as you flip the switch to stunt mode, the helicopter head speed is going to spin up. And so you'll want to have throttle hold on and then flip to your, your stunt mode and have your stick at the center position because that's going to be zero lift. Remember we set up our pitch curves, which when you're in stunt mode, all this stick does is change the pitch of the blades. And so you want it at the center position so that you're not giving any kind of lift. And then you can turn off your throttle hold the head speed is going to spin up, but since you're not adding any pitch to the blades, the helicopter will stay on the ground. Then when you give positive pitch, the helicopter will lift. When you give negative pitch, the helicopter is going to want to go down. So that's how you can fly upside down and give lift because it's actually pushing air up from the blades. So when you're upside down, it's pushing air down. 
So yeah, that's something to get used to. You're so used to just dropping the throttle in normal mode when you get in trouble. Well, now you've got to hit throttle hold because if you drop the throttle, you're actually pushing the helicopter into the ground. So that's you really got to wrap your head around using throttle hold to kill the uh, the throttle, to kill the head speed because this no longer stops the motor from moving once you're in stunt mode. So that's very important to get used to that. Uh, I think really that's it as far as explaining uh, CP and dual rates and expo and everything and I think I covered that all so there's one last step now that we have everything set up we have to actually bind uh, to the helicopter so you take off the canopy here and just pop these the body pegs on the back there and it should slide off the front and then we want to so we want, we've got the radio on we want to leave it on and we want to plug in the battery Okay, now it's plugged in, and then you want to, you've got a tiny little button here in the front that you want to press and hold. This should be blinking. I think it's actually already noticed that it's bound because I've already bound this to this radio before, uh, but for the first time when you do this, this little red light here should be blinking. And then you've got this tiny black button that you've got to press and hold for three seconds. One, two, three. And now it should be bound to the helicopter. There we go. So now I can throw my throttle hold on and make sure that, see now it won't, it won't give any throttle, but you can see that the throttle is changing the pitch of the blaze. That's why they're moving around. And then my elevator and aileron is also moving them so we can tell I'm definitely bound. Uh, I've got it on normal mode so I can go ahead and remove throttle hold and nothing's gonna happen and I'll kind of try to show you so now when I give some throttle the head starts to spin up and you'll see I'll give it throttle and then once I hit throttle hold it just it cuts the motor out. So let's let's uh, okay I've got throttle hold on I'll put the stick at middle position here which is going to be our zero lift for stunt mode and so now I'll change to stunt one and now it is ready to go it, it wants to be spinning as soon as I let off throttle hold that head is going to spin up to 90% uh, we set it remember our throttle curves we set position one to 90% when it's in the middle position two is 100% across the board so that the head speed will never change regardless of what our pitch is set at. Uh, but in stunt one, we're going to be at 90% here in the middle, 100% at either full extreme. And then our pitch curve that we've set up, you can see how the blades... So when I'm down, or okay, we'll give full lift, you can see the, the blades kind of have a downward angle. That's how they push air down. And then when I put the stick all the way down, now you'll see they've got an upward angle, so it wants to push air up. But if I put it right in the center, that should be where we've got a flat blade. It's not creating any lift. So now when I take off throttle hold, it should spin up to 100%, but it's not going to lift or anything because the blades have no pitch to them. So let's see what happens. <laughs> Well, it still uh, it created some some whiff there and flew off the table, but that was uh, to give you an idea there. And so then I just hit throttle hold right away when it started getting out of control and the blades spun down. So now you want to turn stunt back off. Now you can turn throttle. Hold. Oop! I had my stick up, but so now with the stick down and throttle hold off, you'll get no lift. Uh, so I think really that's all there is to all that. It's it's quite a bit to uh, get used to a CP heli, especially if you have not uh, flown coaxial and fixed pitch helis much. So take it slow, stay in normal mode, stay on low rates, and you know just really kind of get a feel for it before you try doing any aggressive flight or doing any 3D flight. And I really recommend practicing on a simulator before you try 3D flight. Uh, if you do want to try 3D flight for the first time on the real thing, 
uh, just make sure, you know, keep it away from yourself. These things can and will hurt you. Even, even this small size, these blades, I mean, I've already, you can see I've taken a good nick out of it. I got myself with it. If you look at my original review, I had a little cut on my finger. Uh, these things can and will hurt you, and they move really, really fast. So take it seriously. Uh, you know, stay away from other people. Take it up really high in the air before you try doing any 3D maneuvers for the first time and be responsible. Um, other than that, I think we're good to go. Make sure, you know, if you've got any questions, feel free to comment and uh, share it on your Facebook or whatever. Pass it around. Help people out. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time.